apologize, Phaedra. I, I think I went from February 9th at some point to February 10th. I'm going to go back to February 9th. Okay. At some point yesterday, you testified that one of the pictures that was an, admitted into evidence showed Car Charlie wearing the tank top that you say she was wearing on February 9th, right? Yes, on Thursday. And can I ask you, you know, that picture is, I guess, on paper or printed out on a paper, right? Um. It, it was uh, taken on a phone. I'm not too sure how it is right now. Okay, as far as the one that came into evidence, was did that come on the TV or was that just a picture um, when you testified about it? I mean, there was a, a paper one, but it came on the TV too. And that's the one you looked at here in court and identified and was entered into evidence? Yes. Where is the original... Well, I guess who took that picture? I can't recall who took the picture. A few of us had that app at the time. Well, didn't you testify specifically who took that picture? I, I might have um, remembered later on before. So you remember the other day who took the picture you don't remember now? Oh, did I test, sorry, did I testify on Thursday about that? Do you recall testifying as to who took that picture of, is it you and Charlie together? Yeah, it would have been me taking the picture of um, both of them or it would Okay, so who's in the picture? I'm sorry. It would have been Brooke and Charlie in the okay. picture. So who took the picture? Uh, it should have been me. When you say should have been me, do you know whether it was you or not? I can't recall for sure. Would you happen to know, well, how was that picture taken then? It was um, from an iPhone. Whose iPhone? I know I had the app, so it, it should have been me. I took the picture. So my question to you is, where is the original digital image for that? <clears throat> um, it would still be on that phone that I had at that time. Okay, and where is that phone? Um, I'm not too sure. How was it that, well, I guess, when did, when did you provide the image that ultimately ended up in this courtroom? Let me go back. Did you ultimately give that image to anybody? Um, I gave it to, yeah, I did give it to someone. I had given my whole phone in for evidence. So your test, and I'm sorry, what, what number would that phone have been associated with? Uh, that, my phone number at the time was 808-280-5003. And your testimony is that the digital image for that picture that came into evidence with Brooke and Charlie is on the phone? Yes. So I guess the, my question is, who printed out that picture? Um, I'm not too sure who printed it out. Would it have been you or somebody else, I guess, representing the state of Hawaii? Um, I believe it should have been someone representing. I wasn't sure how to print pictures from an iPhone. Okay, so do you know who cropped that picture, for example? No. Do you re have any independent recollection? Well, you don't even remember taking the picture, do you? 
Not fully. We were taking a lot of pictures that night with the face swap. We were face swapping everyone um, off of two different phones. Because if I understand correctly, you are testifying that the image here in court was tampered with, right? Objection, Your Honor. There's no testimony to that. It states evidence. The objection is sustained. You testify that you applied some kind of Facebook app that changed the integrity, the original integrity of the picture, right? Well, the original um, picture was the point of doing the face swap. Right, and then when you did the face swap, you'd agree with me that's tampering with the picture, right? That, that is the app, yes, doing what That's the what app ultimately does. that app does, is tampers with the picture. There's objection, that's argumentative. Objections to form the question. Thank you. It changes the original picture, right? Mm, yes. And according to you, that's just the Facebook app, right? Oh, uh, yeah. The face swap. Now, no, I do object. There's no testimony that this is a Facebook app. The objection is sustained. Did you testify this is a Facebook app? It's a face swap oh, app. Face swap. Now, if I understand your testimony correctly, at some point, relative to the ultimate um, image that's depicted in the photo, it started off as having a face swap on it, but then ended up with the faces back to the original people? Yes. And your testimony is that the picture that was admitted in the evidence is the picture of the faces back on the original people? Yes. <coughs> so when did this printed out copy materialize in terms of the, the ultimate, oh, strike that, strike that. So do you happen to know When, so at some point it gets, the faces get swapped and then how does it get back to its original position? You would use the same app. Okay. And your testimony is that you do not know where the original digital images for either one of those are, the, the altered one or the ultimate one? They would be on um, my phone. And your testimony would be then that the final resulting picture that the jury is left with is not Photoshop or anything in any way, right? No. Nope. Now let me ask you this. Is there any way other than what you're saying to verify that that picture was taken at the time that you said it was taken? Um, was there any other way? Yeah, is there any other way to verify that? Um, other than on my phone in the actual images, it would say the date and the time. So that, if they have your phone, should be able to bring that in? Yes. And we'd be able to get an accurate time? Yes. Okay, as far as your testimony regarding <clears throat> well let me ask you this relative to the black skirt that you ultimately found at Paraquats is it your testimony well did I hear your testimony correctly that you don't necessarily believe that that was the skirt she, you saw her wearing last, but your testimony is more that you have seen her with, wear that skirt before. No, that was the skirt that I had last seen her in, but I do remember seeing her wearing it often. 
So your testimony is that the black skirt is the last thing, you, last skirt you saw her wearing on February 9th? Yes. And then you testified that it was a essentially a brand new tank top that she was wearing? Yes. And that's how you identified the tank top as being hers? Yes. Is it your testimony that that tank top was the last tank top you saw Charlie wearing on February 9th? Yes, it is. Can we agree that Charlie had multiple or more than one blue polka dotted tank top type tops? No, I don't remember ever seeing her with um, another polka dot shirt. She doesn't. She wasn't really into polka dots. What about the picture with the tongue stud? Isn't that a blue polka dot? That's a yeah, her pinup dress. But it, um, as far as the top goes, wouldn't you agree with me that looks like a, essentially the same form as that blue polka dot tank top? It's objection. It's argumentative, and it assumes facts, not evidence. <clears throat> Um, they look the same in the fact that they have polka dots, but I could definitely tell the difference. And that's because one of them has more scrunchier sides, right? Yes. Okay. Because you'd agree with me that the one you say she was wearing was like scrunchy on the side the last time you saw her on February 9th. Yeah. And so you're saying that's the one, the scrunchy one is the one that she's wearing on February 9th in contrast to the one that she's wearing showing her tongue stud? Sorry, um, what do you mean? So one? between the two pictures, tongue stud one mm -hmm. and the one from February 9th as you testify about, which one has the scrunchy sides? That would be the tank top with the, um, on February 9th, the blue one. Okay, and your, your testimony would be that that picture shows that scrunchy side? Uh, the picture with her face swap, it does not show the scrunchy. The scrunchy was all the way at the bottom. And your testimony is that the one with the tongue stud has less scrunchier sides? Um, I, don't, I don't think it has any scrunchy sides but it is um, a full dress. Okay. And regarding Well, let me ask you this. Do you know Well, check that. Regarding the black skirt Did you tell, well, when you arrived back at your house <clears throat> with the items, including that black skirt, you spoke with Officer Takuchi, right? Um, I did talk to an officer, if that was his name, then yes. Now, he asked you about these clothing, right? Yes. Now, would you agree with me that when you talked about those clothing, clothing to Officer Takushi, you didn't describe them as the last clothes that Carly was wearing. You described them... Well, you simply don't tell him that that was the last thing that Judge, you saw her wearing, Objection. Right? This is all hearsay. None of it's admissible. The impeachment at this point. In, the In fact, what you tell Officer Takushi. Objection, Your Honor, this calls for hearsay. This is not this for is impeachment. impeachment. There's no inconsistent statement, Your Honor. This is not impeachment. How would he know if I haven't put that inconsistent statement? Because he's going to blurt out something that's inadmissible. The objection is sustained. Thank you. You recall talking to Officer Takushi when you came back and talking about the topic of the clothing you found, right? Yes. 
At no time do you tell officers. Objection, this is based on hearsay and it's inadmissible. The objection is sustained. Thank you. And this is a third time he's asked that same question, Your Honor. So your testimony here today is that that black skirt is the last skirt you saw Carly wearing. Right? Objection, asked and answered for the third time. Your Honor, I'm trying to lay the proper the foundation. Is over. Yes. Now, you recall talking to Officer Takushi, right? Yes. Now, you don't tell him that I'm that was the last. this again. is the fourth time he's asking this question. It's inadmissible and it's hearsay. The, obje the objection is sustained. Judge, are you, are you telling me? I can't. I suppose on the question on a higher condition of foundation on the record. Proceed. Isn't it true that what you tell Officer Takushi at that point in time? Objection, is this that like calls for hearsay is, is inadmissible. It'll be inconsistent if I'm allowed to get it There's out. not the way to go about an inconsistent statement if there is one. The objection is sustained. You your testimony today is that you observed Charlie wearing that skirt as her last thing that you saw her wearing, right? Yes. Do you recall talking to Officer Tukushi and telling him something differently? Objection, Your Honor. This is just <coughs> hearsay. It's cause for you. Your Honor, may we approach? I will go with objection. You may answer the question. Would you repeat the question? Do you recall telling Officer Takushi something different than that? Objection. There is no different statement in that, Your Honor. And it calls for hearsay, whatever comes next. This is not proper impeachment. The, uh, Your Honor, may, may, may we approach? No, I, um, let's, let's just, well, why don't, why don't you approach? <laughs> At no time do you tell Officer Takushi that that was the last thing you saw Charlie wearing. What you tell Officer Takushi instead is that you had seen Charlie wearing that skirt before, right? Um, 
I don't remember the full conversation, but. Okay, we'll, we'll look, looking at your statement in <coughs> Professor Takushi's report, refresh your recollection? Yes, it will. Okay, may I approach? You do. Well, yeah, we haven't seen what he's going to show. Officer Takushi's report. Recollection refreshed yes. as to what you told Officer Takushi. Yes. Okay, you don't. You don't tell him that uh, that was the last clothes you saw Carly with Charlie wearing, right? Uh, no, not in the report. Uh, you tell him that you had seen Charlie wearing that skirt before, right? Yes. May I approach on? Yes. Exhibit 71 and 72. Okay, let me go on while that's happening and ask you. <coughs> what is relative to this black skirt? What would your testimony be relative to the length of that skirt? Um, on her hit about her ankles. So just to be clear, your testimony is that the picture here would be from February 9th, right? Yes. And your testimony is that this is the polka dot tight top or tank top that is scrunchy on the sides? Yes. Okay. And your testimony would be that this is not the one that's scrunchy on the side then? No. And the council needs to identify which photographs he has shown for the record. The second one would be 71, the first one then 72. Your testimony is that this final product here, as displayed in Exhibit 72, has not been photoshopped in any way. No. Go back to February 10th. 
2014. At some point, you testified that after going over to Charlie's house in the evening, well, actually, let me, let me go way back. Um, at about what time in the evening did you guys, I, I guess, feel that there was something wrong and start following up on that? I can't recall the exact time. I know it was, or it was just starting to get dark. And so, do you recall about what time you guys went over to Charlie's? I don't recall the exact time. Did it been right, uh, right after it getting dark, or did you guys wait for a period in the night? Um, no, it was, it was still a little light out. And that's when you folks went over to Charlie's house? Yes. Um, and at some point you testified that you went in and opened the door and, and both of you effectively were able to look in? Yes. Were you inside looking in yourself? Um, I had gone in, yes. And your testimony is that your mother, you don't recall whether she went in, but you know that she saw inside? Yeah. Okay, well, what did you guys do about um, the shishi that um, Zoe did, that had made? I believe we left it. <clears throat> you can't recall for sure. And you testified that other than that, there wasn't anything out of place? Nope, not that I can remember. Everything seemed. So it wasn't, there wasn't any disarray near the TV where the TV would normally be or anything like that? No. Was the TV there? Yes. Is this the big screen TV? That was in Carly's residence? So yes. Carly's residence. Was that her TV? No, oh, yeah, it was. So when you folks first went there at night, that TV was there and nothing appeared to be, I, I guess, out of place other than the shishi from the dog? Yeah, nothing else. <clears throat> I guess, I'm sorry, how did you get inside? I had gone through the kitchen window. Okay, did you try to get in any other way? Um, there was no other way besides the front door, which was locked. And so did you try anything before going into the window? No, I did not. Did you have any kind of key? No, I don't. Did you try using a key? No. Okay, because you recall being interviewed back on March 4th by Detective Hamilton and Dodds, right? Yes. Yeah. And isn't it true that you told them, and this is page 17, that you thought you had a key at first, you tried, but it didn't work? They you don't know would looking at the interview transcript refresh your recollection? Yes, it would. You oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. tell detectives Hamilton and Dodds that you thought you had a key at first you tried it but it didn't work yeah I believe um, I was talking about my mom though that she had a key okay and approach. Yes. approach yes so you folks thought you had a key and you tried it but it didn't work I guess so, yes. And that's when you climb through the window? Yes. 
Was that your idea or your mother's idea? It was my idea. Okay. What do you do next? Um, I saw Zoe and I unlocked the door for my mom. And then what? Um, <coughs> I don't fully recall what happened next. Wouldn't it be accurate that you folks leave at that point and go to Minute Stop? I, I believe so. I don't think we did anything else at that house. Is there anything preventing you folks from making a missing persons report from Charlie's residence? Um, nothing preventing us. But you folks decide to go over to Minute Stop to make that report, right? Yes. Do you use the pay phone there or do you use your cell phones? Cell phone. Who calls? Uh, my mom. And did you guys actually make the report? <coughs> yes. And what happens next is that you guys wait for the police for a while but decide to go back to the Haiku house instead, right? Yeah. Why would you call for minute stop and not wait for the police where you call them? Um, I believe if we were waiting a while, we were, were antsy, so we wanted to get back to the house, see maybe if she's there, if anyone else had heard from her. Okay, but you don't go up back up to Charlie's house, you go to your house, right? Yeah, we went to our house. And at some point, you folks make the report. Yes. Do you go back to Charlie's house? Yes, we did go back to Charlie's house. Okay, and when was that? Um, it was later on that night. Would it be more accurate that it was about 1 o'clock in the morning? Uh, yes, it was definitely dark. So yeah, how did you get in at that point? Um, I believe I crawled through the window again. Okay, and who was with you? My mom. So it was just you and your mom at 1 in the morning? Yes. Did you folks try to get anybody else to go with you? Um, back to Charlie's. No, I... No, we didn't. Um, what happens when you get there? Uh, we took Zoe back to our house, I believe. Okay, um, I guess, can you describe how that happened? Um, I went through the window, just grabbed Zoe. I mean, she knew us, so she, she was happy to come and put her in the car and we, we left. That was the second time you folks went there um, since February, February 10th, right? Uh, yes. Now, While you were there, would it be accurate to say that, well, we lay a foundation. Are you familiar with Charlie's ice cream dress? Yes. Would it be accurate to say that sometime in the course of one of your two visits or both visits to Charlie's residence, you saw that ice cream dress? Uh, yes. Okay, where did you see that ice cream dress? It was in her room. Um, I think it was on the bed, okay. as if she had just taken it off. And there's only one bed there, right? Yes. And this would have been Charlie's bed? Yeah. <clears throat> so, we're now into about, we're now into the early morning hours of February 11th, right? Yes. Let me ask you this, at what point well, before I ask you that, what did you guys do after you grabbed Zoe? I believe we just went back to um, the Haiku residence. Yes. And what did you guys do after that? I believe um, we, we just decided to go to sleep and
figure it all out in the morning. Okay. Let me ask you this. At what point, if any, were you denied access to Charlie's residence? Um. Subsequent to those two times that you went in there? None, none that I can recall. Okay, so is it your testimony that even after you going into the, that residence twice, you were still allowed to go in there at any point after that? Um, no, I, I don't want to object because that question is vague the way it's phrased. So you got into Charlie's house those two times, right? Yes. Was there ever a time that you tried to go back there and was denied access? Not me personally. I don't think I really went back to that house. Do you know? Do you have any personal knowledge of whether that house was blocked? Was whether people were being denied access to that house at any time um, subsequent to that? Not, not that I recall. Do you know of any of your family members who actually did go back to that house after you went into that house? I believe my mom. Judge, I'm, I'm objection. This calls for speculation, and there's no foundation for this. Why ask your personal knowledge? I, that's why I prefaced my question. Objection is speculation. Okay, so you'll need to rephrase the question if you want to base on personal knowledge. Do you have any personal knowledge of whether any of your family members went back to that Charlie's residence after you did? Um, I believe my mom. <coughs> Again, your uh, objection, speculation, there's no testimony, yeah, no personal knowledge. Here, asking her if she observed it. Is that correct? So, oh. That would be the proper question. Yeah, that's, that's what, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, her answer, believe that. <coughs> well, I do object to it's confusing to ask her for personal knowledge, and she doesn't understand what personal knowledge is about. That's fine. I, 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 I I'm living by the court's ruling is what I'm trying to say, I guess. Of course. Okay. Um, would you agree with me that your mother is, is very familiar with Charlie's clothes at around, the, around the time of her disappearance? Objection, speculation, Your Honor. The objection is sustained. Well, Phaedra, how did you folks finally come to realize that there was something wrong in terms of Charlie not coming up to the haiku house? Um, when did we realize something was wrong? No, I object. This, uh, that question is vague and confusing. That wasn't the question. The objection was <coughs> Charlie regularly brings her clothes up to your mom's house to get washed, right? Um, on occasion, yes. And wouldn't you agree with me that, well, when you say on occasion, what's, uh, what occasions? I'm not too sure on their occasion. It was more of uh, my mom and Charlie deal with that. Well, did Charlie have a washing machine at her residence? No, she did not. She, had, she did wash her clothes, right? Yes. Do you know where she washed her clothes? Uh, my mom had washed them for her. Okay. And isn't it true that that's how you folks started to get really concerned is that she never brought her clothes over? and. You guys started getting worried, right? On objection, speculation as to anyone else. The objection is sustained. Is that one of the things that started getting you worried? Um, not, not that. It was more that she did not contact me the whole day. So, have you seen your mother wash Charlie's clothes? <laughs> Not personally, I was usually at school during those times. Okay, I'm going to move on to February 11th. You're kind of there. But do you remember how you started off February 11th? Um, it, we kind of started it normal. We didn't really tell anyone because we didn't want to make it a huge deal, hoping that nothing actually happened. Um, so my mom made Johnny breakfast and lunch. Uh, 
And when everyone left the house, me and my mom uh, drove out to Hana and started searching out that way. that you had made contact with Brooke and Stephen as they were going out to Hana, is that accurate? Yes. Can you describe that? Um, I had heard from my mom that Brooke was going to be going out there uh, with Stephen so that we can show her um, where it was that his car was broken down. So I saw them driving past, she stopped and I jumped in with her. Okay, so were you heading back Haiku way already? Yes, me and my mom were. And does Steven actually take you guys out to a spot near K&I? Uh, yes, he did lead us to a, a spot that he said. <clears throat> and at some point, what, when you guys reach the spot, can you describe what happens? Um, he let us know that that was the spot where his car was broken down. I, I can't recall for sure, but I think Brooke put a comb there just to mark it um, for our next search. And we decided to, me and Brooke decided to go back towards Haiku and stop at any point that we could and um, call for her or throw rocks over to see if we could hear her car. Um, so just to be clear, this is your folks' first search of the Hana Highway, um, at least the family? Yes. Okay. Um, I guess where you folks meet Stephen, are you familiar with Kaumahina, uh, I guess Wayside State Park, or Wayside Park? Um, no, I don't think I am, but I'm not too familiar with it. I guess it has the, it's the one with the bathrooms out there. Um, no, sorry, I'm not, okay. I'm not too sure. Okay. I, I guess, uh, uh, do you recall where on the road you met with Brooke and Steven? <coughs> um, no, I don't recall. Okay, so about how long are you folks out at that area where he's showing you that spot? Um. <coughs> I would say it was about an hour or two. Now, what happens when you folks are done there? Um, at that spot, we, we drove, uh, me and Brooke drove back towards Haiku. And what did Steven do? Um, he said that he was going to go search um, more towards Hana. And did you observe him do that? Uh, I did watch him drive away towards that direction. Yes. <clears throat> now, at some point, do you folks end up <coughs> meeting Stephen again? <coughs> yes. Okay, and where is that? Um, at Paraquats. And that's your testimony, is that the next time you folks see Stephen after dispersing from that spot is at Paraquats itself, right? Yes. You remember being interviewed by Detective Dodds and Hamilton, right? Yes, I do. Now, isn't it true that what you tell them, page. this is page 25, is that after you dispersed, Stephen went Han away first before meeting up 
just homicide and I, I, I do object because he's reading verbatim that is not how the impeachment process goes if he's going to go about it. Objection is sustained. You recall being interviewed by Detective Hamilton Hodge. Dodd? Yes. Let me go all the way back. Your testimony here today is that after you folks dispersed, Stephen went Han away first, and then you folks next met up at Paraquat's Bay, right? That's where I next saw him, yes. But you recall talking to Detective Dodds and Hamilton, correct? Yes. And isn't it true that what you tell them is that when you dispersed, Stephen went Han away first, before meeting up just Han aside of Paraquat's? Judge and I, uh, the, the state objects to that is a verbatim reading of that passage. The, the objections are the wrong answer the question. Um, I don't recall. Okay, we're looking at your interview, refresh your recollection. Yes. May I approach you on it? Yes. what you told Detective Tom Hamilton and Dodds? Um, yes. Isn't it accurate that you told him that after dispersing, you folks met up on the Hana side of Paraquats, and that, that would be before actually meeting up at Paraquats, right? Judge, that is inaccurate if counsel is going to go through all this in. She can answer no. Well, that is inaccurate, though. Well, okay. uh, it's a, what's the objection? That he is giving her an inaccurate statement as to what he's looking at the transcript. Or the transcript. Uh, I'm over the objection. You, you know, it, isn't that accurate? That, that what you told Detective Hamilton and Dodds is that you guys actually met up on the Hana side of Paraquats before meeting up the Paraquats? You know, the objection is to completeness. That is not the complete response that she gave. Well, if we can approach on that, because there's some dicta in there that I think is objectionable, if I'm not mistaken. Why don't you both get that worked out during the recess? But under doctrine of completeness, I'm going to uh, allow um, or, or sustain the objection to make sure that we have the Is the judge, is the court sustaining an objection? Because I think she's prepared to. Not for completeness, I am. Yes. Okay. May I approach the witness to get that? Yes. Thank you. And are, is, are we going to recess now? No, no. no. Um, there are five minutes. Oh, I see. Okay, so you had an opportunity to refresh your recollection, right? Yes. Now, isn't it true that what you tell Detective Hamilton's and Dodds is that 
I mean, where do you want to start? No, not really? What are the responses, Your Honor? No, you're the one asking for the doctrine of completeness. What, what's complete to you? Your Honor, at this point, counsels should be addressing the court, not the state. There's no private conversation yeah, in I, trial. I agree. Thank you. Yeah, okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll just go ahead. With it. So your, what you told them was that Is your recollection refreshed as to what you told Hamilton and Dobbs? A little, yes. Yeah, what did you tell them? Um, I had told them that we left that spot. We, we left, left what spot? The, um, the spot that Stephen said his truck was broken down. Um, me and Brooke drove back towards Haiku and Stephen towards Hana. And when we saw him next, he was driving up from Paraquats. Because that is your testimony that the next time you saw Stephen is at Paraquats, right? Yes. And if I recall your testimony, it was even to the uh, extent of, well, your, your testimony would have been that um, on your way to Paraquats, you would, well, strike that shit. Okay, and, and your testimony would be then that as far as from the time you saw Stephen at the spot where he showed you, the very next time you saw him was when he was driving up that dirt road with his lights on? Yes. That's your testimony today, right? Yes. And your testimony is that you did not see him another time prior to getting to Paracons, right? No. Okay. Now, your testimony is that when you reach Paraquats, is it you who tells Brooke to pull over? I think it was um, we both saw that road and decided to pull over. And when do you see Stephen's lights coming up relative to that? Is it right when you're pulling over or after you're there searching? Um, we had parked and we're talking about whether or not we should check that area out and that's um, right about that time is when we saw his lights coming up. About a minute or so? Yeah. And you'd agree with me that when you saw Stephen come up, mm -hmm. you were able to communicate with him? Yes. Did he get out of his car? I don't believe so, but I, I can't recall for sure. Um, do you like stay away from him when you're talking with him or do you go up to his window or anything? I believe I we all stayed in the car okay. So you and Brooke were in your cars when you were in your car when you were speaking with him? Yes, I believe so <clears throat> And I guess how was that how are the cars situated then? Um, the way that she pulled over uh, It was we were facing the road, so when he pulled out... And when you say you were facing the road, where you're, you're, that would be your the car that you were in, your, the headlights are facing the road, the yeah. dirt road? Um, not the dirt road, uh, on, on the highway. Okay, towards Haiku? Uh, yes. Okay. And, and then he pulled up um, kind of right beside us. Okay, and so would he and his driver's side be pulling up towards the passenger side of your vehicle or the driver's side? I believe it was the driver's side. So he would have come out and gone in front and come around then, or? No, um, the way that we parked, he would have just been able to pull up right next to us. And so when he pulled up, was it his driver's side next to your driver's side? It was his. Or his passenger side next to your driver's side? I believe it was his passenger side next to our driver's side. And it was nonetheless close enough for you folks to communicate effectively? Yes. <clears throat> um,
sorry, when does the court plan on taking a recess? As soon as I said she went into the area. Uh, this probably would be a good idea. All right. Okay.